um, what we are engaging on today is the defense of the 2021 budget. And uh, part of what we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at your performance in 2021 and also your proposals for 2022. But um, <clears throat> as um, um, a formal um, remarks in terms of um, the session itself and given the critical role that your ministry plays in the um, Nigerian economy, I also think that um, it will be proper if we also, I mean, um, make some few remarks that we would like you to also respond to in order to bring us into, uh, <clears throat> into um, I mean, bring into light some of um, the policies around your uh, um, very important ministry. And in the course of this um, budget defense, we had also met with some of the agencies under your ministry. We have met with um, Industrial Training Fund, we have also SMIDAN, um, SON, but again, maybe if I may pick on ITF, that's Industrial Training Fund, we also like to, there are some observations that we noted. Um, maybe perhaps part of what the light will shed for us is in the areas of how the policy trust of, um, say, ITF is very much in line with the, with the budget aspirations as well. Because there is no way, no matter how, how fantastic a policy trust is, if it, is not, if it doesn't cascade into the budget, I mean, execution of that policy trust will be a problem. So we'd like you to just make some remarks on it. Again, we also met with the Sugar Council. Again, um, we have issues around the Sugar Council because the policy trust setting it up to was with the intention of making sure that we, we are self-reliant in, ter in terms of sugar consumption here. So what is the level of productivity? What achievements have we made? It is also meant to create jobs and also help us with, I mean, reduce some of the strains on our FX reserves. Perhaps we can just speak to this generally before we go into the 2022-2021 budget. First of all, the Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan, as you rightly observed, it's a government's uh, overall plan to change the industrial landscape. And uh, when we came on board, we found that already some activities had uh, started in terms of the review of that policy. And the mandate we're given is to look at that policy in terms of the individual uh, sectors within the plan. So for instance, uh, and I'm just saying this not in any order, uh, we look at uh, the tomato policy, uh, what is happening in that sector, how can government, in terms of policies and uh, various initiatives or incentives, how can government improve? Because also uh, tomatoes is one area where we're doing a lot of bulk import. So we're encouraging uh, a lot of uh, our own growers and manufacturers. Uh, you look also at the cotton, textile and garment sub-policy within this uh, NIRP. And here we're working assiduously with uh, various stakeholders to see how we can bring back, uh, if not at least 50% of the textile and garment industry. Uh, there's been a lot of focus on textiles, but not on the garments. So we're placing a lot of emphasis because countries like um, Bangladesh, uh, they are known for garments, making the garments. Otherwise, you produce the textiles. And then what happens? So if you are able to get these two in alignment, then we'll create more jobs. One from the textile industry and the other side from the garment industry. You also have the, the oil palm policy, which we're looking at, to see how this uh, production of palm oil and export, and also alternate uses, rather than just consum uh, consuming palm oil for food. What else can we use it for? How do we add value? We also have the, um, um, sorry, the sugar. Sugar is uh, another area entirely. And some of the uh, challenges, there's a sugar council, but we're all doing a backward integration. Now, the amount of sugar that's consumed in this country is quite phenomenal. And by policy, uh, we're trying to encourage investors to set up uh, sugar plantations. And sugar plantations, means a lot of acreage, it means a lot of water, 
So we are working closely with, uh, you know, the, the state, the Ministry of Water Resources, and see what kind of incentives can we put in so that they can also use modern technology, <clears throat> like drip irrigation and so on. But beyond that, to fill in this gap, various incentives have been put into the large uh, sugar producing companies so that uh, when they bring in um, bulk sugar, they, there's a particular incentive that, or waiver that they're given through the Ministry of Finance. But we're encouraging more of local production so that we can see how we can meet up to the gap. For the specific in terms of numbers, I think I'll later uh, defer to the Director of Industrial uh, Development. Now, from our side, the NIRP, we should be able to wrap up most of the sectoral policies by latest next uh, first quarter 2022 because we, we also have a presidential mandate to ensure that this is done and then we begin implementation. Um, also just to mention some of the areas that we mentioned, cotton, textile and garment, we've already attracted uh, some support. Uh, for example, the Islamic Development Bank is helping us with uh, you know, the both national and international consultants to ensure that the cotton, textile, and garment uh, aspect takes off. And if I will give a specific example, we've been working with NEPSA to see that the cotton, textile, and garment zone around Funtua, because there are many uh, textiles, jewelries that have gone fallow, there are very few working, so that we can get um, those cluster, that particular cluster together and in fact, by the first quarter of next year, we hope to do a groundbreaking ceremony that will allow that sector uh, to kick off. Uh, you asked a question about um, uh, ITF. Okay, uh, re reducing reduction on imports. Yes, where that's why a lot of times we have all these uh, policy dialogues and constant uh, touch with manufacturers. We work closely with Manufacturers Association and NASIMA so that we listen to the manufacturers. Where are the areas that they think we need to have some either policy shifts or further incentives to encourage them to um, do value addition rather than uh, continue to rely on importation. In terms of ITF, um, ITF, the, the, the policy thrust of ITF, uh, to my mind, that is, uh, uh, providing skills and entrepreneurship for our, our young and thriving, and, and not even the young ones, even people that are already working. They do all this customized training. That, for me, uh, to a large extent, is okay. But the revenue that they get it derives from uh, companies. So the companies give these percentages, and sometimes you have a lot of uh, default in terms of uh, production. And then they are obliged, because they generate this IGR, they are obliged to remit uh, part of it to companies that do, um, what do you call it, reimbursements. When they do the training themselves, they, they are allowed by law to get the reimbursement. Thank you yes. very much, Honorable Minister. Thank yes. you, thank you. Let me, let me just, I mean, um, that's just by way of opening. Um, let me just also let you know that we have met with some of these organizations. We have actually written some of them formally, um, telling them to give them, bring us to speed as to, so, I mean, how far they've gone with their policies, and which, of course, at the end of this budget defense, perhaps we'll also inform follow-up stations that we're going to have with them via oversighting and all of that. So at this point, I think we should just go into the budget for 2021 and budget 20, uh, for 2022. So you may also proceed on that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, distinguished uh, senators. Um, let me, by way of uh, giving an overview of the uh, budget, uh, begin by stating that uh, the ministry's uh, budget is a budget of selective projects and programs in high priority areas. The essence of this is to provide and sustain the framework for government strategic in, in, in initiatives. Is that a paper you are presenting no. that we can have a copy of? Or you are, or you, no. 
So the way you do it, under, yes. let me just guide you. Okay. So whichever document you are reading from, okay? So uh, if we start with the page 35, is the budget page 35 of the document? Is the budget performance summary 2021? Page 35. My own page 35. 35. So what yes. is the heading of your 35? Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment 2021 budget performance summary. No. Yes. Is that what you want to say? Yes. Page 35. What do I have? Okay. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Give me one. You don't present that one. It's different from when I get here. Please, you may go ahead, please. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, in terms of uh, 2021 budget performance, um, the personnel costs for 2021 was uh, 3 billion. Uh, the releases were 2.2 billion, utilization 2.5 billion, and um, percentage uh, utilization is 100%. And uh, as the distinguished senators are aware, this is done through the IPPIS, so it doesn't uh, come to the ministry. Uh, in terms of overheads, the appropriation was 762 million. The releases were 573 million. Utilization stands at 386 million and there's a balance of 186 uh, million. Percentage utilization um, is 67 percent. And then for the capital, uh, the appropriation was 6.1 billion. Uh, releases 3.9 billion. Utilization 2.1 billion. There's a balance of 1.8 billion, and percentage utilization so far is 53%. Uh, so um, overall, uh, the percentage utilization of all the three components is 70%. Now, in terms of uh, revenue performance, the projected IGR was 1.6 billion. The actual generation is 1.1 billion. There's a retention of 117 million and remittance to the consolidated revenue fund of 1 billion. And uh, the necessary uh, receipts, evidence of the remittance to the CFR uh, in an annex. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. And then uh, you have the shortfall or excess, but uh, this would further be uh, explained uh, when we look at the details of the uh, revenue performance. Uh, basically, in some areas, um, because where the projections or the data is up to September, so we still have room to improve between now and the end of the year. And in some cases, we've uh, a little bit gone beyond our expectation, and in some cases, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a shortfall. So, if um, we could kindly turn to um, page, I just want to give the details. Page 64. Page 64, oh, sorry. Page 64 gives the breakdown of the 2021 revenue. And um, yes, the 2021 IGR, so the breakdown is on page 64. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there are some areas that uh, 
uh, we've done well, and there's some areas where there are some shortfalls or excess. But uh, the main uh, revenue generating department is the weight and measures uh, department, uh, which has uh, responsibility for legal metrology. So uh, from the projected uh, 1 billion, their actual is 588 million. And uh, there's a 20% retention, um, which has been approved. And the remittance to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. And um, we, we're still, there's a shortfall of 411, which we hope will be made up uh, before the end of the year. Then we have the Trademarks, Patents, and Designs Department. Uh, their projection uh, for the year was 500, 500 million. Uh, actually, they've already generated 400 and 540 million. And uh, you can see that the, we, we have an excess already of 40, 40 million. So the other department is export fumigation, where we projected uh, 100 million. Uh, the actual is 58 million, and here we have a shortfall of uh, minus 41. Then late notifications and BIPC, uh, which is 1 million. Uh, the actual is 408, uh, four, 4 million. 4.8 million, and here we've uh, exceeded our targets. Then uh, tender fees, um, the amount generated, 202,000 refunds, sales of assets, uh, rent is actually zero. So these are the revenues, but um, I know that we could generate more if we strengthen trademarks, uh, if, we, if we strengthen weights and measures, and then trademarks, patents, and designs, because uh, there's a lot of demand uh, in these areas. And for weights and measures, because they have a uh, mandate for legal metrology, we're expanding their horizon so that they can go into all the areas that they're mandated by law. Because right now, most of the activities are in the oil terminals, uh, checking the calibration of uh, equipment used to lift crude so that we have data that can also serve as backup information to know how much crude and gas is actually being taken out of the country. But areas like hospitals, checking calibration of machines, airports, uh, filling stations, they do filling stations, <clears throat> but um, they need to train their officers and they need to have the necessary equipment to go all over the country. Already they have offices all over, but these offices need to be properly manned, and more people need to be properly trained and engaged so that uh, jobs are generated uh, for the Nigerian public. So I would like to stop here and perhaps take questions. Uh, so, immediate reaction to my immediate reaction to these numbers is that, you know, we don't have assumptions, okay? We don't have assumptions. We are working in a vacuum here as it is. We need to be guided by assumptions. What was your performance in 2021? What are the assumptions guiding us on the figures we have presented for 2022? Okay, sorry, sorry. Let me continue. Well, go ahead. Let me continue. Having said that, the, coming to the issue of the revenue, okay, you said you generated 1.6 billion in 2021, and that you retained about 170 million. I don't really know why this retention, okay? You said there is a document to that effect. I want to see that document. Because if you are fully funded, okay, by the federal government, Whatever you generate, Honorable Minister, whatever you generate by way of revenue should be 100% remitted to the consolidated, uh, consolidated revenue account. That is what the law says. So I don't know <coughs> what guided your retention of this, uh, of this song. Then finally, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> so, 
Sorry, sir. I just want to. Okay, sir. Okay, sorry. Page 64, I think. Yeah. Uh, page 64. You. Um, your revenue of 20. Okay. Your page 64. You said um, there is this. Uh, under your revenue, you said uh, you had a refund of uh, two points, whatever, a million. I don't know what is this refund about. We need that's why explanations to these figures will have, you know, um, will have uh, been able to guide us. If we had been given explana uh, explanations in writing here, we would have been able to know. We wouldn't have been asking, we wouldn't have been asking some of these questions. We don't know where this refund is coming from. Then you have a uh, rent, zero, zero, zero column. That implies that you have some properties, okay? And that you are expecting rents from some of these properties. Why this zero, zero? Is it that the tenants refused to pay or that you were not in any way expecting this money? We need to know. Minister, you know what you do? Can you just note the questions so that you can respond to every all the questions that you go? Any more? Any more? Go back to page 64. Um, under weight and measures. Um, oh, I'm impressed because you have talked about your plans to actually drive that up. You already knew you have the capacity to do much more than that. I'm curious to know about the minus 41.1% shortfall on that. I wanted to know exactly why that and what's that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me just also lend my voice to the comments uh, <clears throat> so that I can take all the questions uh, one time for the 2021 performance. Um, Firstly, let me commend the fact that um, even from 2017, based on the records that we have here, you have always, you know, remitted to the, C to the, to the, to the CRF. And I think that um, that performance over that period, many, in many cases, um, you, will, you outperform even the target. And even as it is in 2021, I imagine that what you have rendered to us will be possibly, I don't know whether it's at, at November, October, or September, you are currently at about 72, I mean, which also gives the ray of hope that by the end of the year, you probably will be delivering on the set target for revenue as well. And I'm hoping that just like you, the way you have always been compliant, you will also remit appropriately to the CRA. But one question I would just like to ask you um, is that um, if you also look at your, given the critical role of your um, your ministry in terms of um, industrialization and all of that. I think over the same period, that is 2017 to 2021, your capital expenditure budget, from what I have, and I hope um, it is correct, um, in, 2020, in 2017, you had about 19 billion for capital expenditure, of which you had about release of about 9 billion. I hope I'm correct, DFA. I hope I'm correct. Yeah, I need to listen. No, no, I'm just trying to build the, I mean, um, the 2018, you also had about 19 billion as budget and you had a release of about 10 billion. In 2019, about 8.8 .8, and you had 7 billion release. In 2020, 3.8 and you had a release of 2.9 billion. I hope those facts are correct because they are in your document. And in 2021, 6.1 .6, 6 and 3.96 billion. So, I mean, before we go into 2022. So my question around that is that, given the critical role of your um, ministry, one, it will, be, it will be, even if you can't provide the details now, perhaps you'll have to provide it to us later. I hope that when you had the higher level budget and the releases, I hope that um, you can, you'll be able to share with us the impact that has had on the, um, the posture of your, of your, of your, uh, ministry and why are you now scaling down? You know when the, that particular industry is very well needed in the play of the Nigerian economy. I hope you understand what I mean, because in prior years you had very high budgets and all of that, and you also had very reasonable releases. But it, as we now move into a critical period coming out of recession and all of that, when we will expect that more of those expenditure will be, you know, be budgeted for and but we're now seeing it coming down. Do you get what I'm saying? 
Yes, so that would be my comment on the 20, I mean, up to 2021, before we go into 20. So you may quickly just respond to these questions generally, so that we'll move to 2022. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I think I would start with the last question, Mr. Please, Chairman. Please, if you wish, if, if you want no, your no, 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 to come I will just say something. And if you can handle it, Yes, please. because the, last, uh, the very first question I will refer to the DFA. <clears throat> Actually, um, your observation is correct, but because we operate an envelope system and there are priorities that are uh, set by government and then the agencies, the parastatals that deliver on some of these uh, priorities, we've had to, within the sharing of that envelope, give them more funds than headquarters. That's actually what has been happening. So for example, because we have to set up six um, special economic zones, export processing zones, so we have to defer and give a bit more resources, more resources to NEPSA to ensure that it can deliver on that. So uh, you take also Smedan, we have a lot of emphasis on small and medium enterprises. So we're giving more resources within the sharing envelope that is why the envelope that comes to headquarters seems to be reducing, but uh, the, the details uh, will be given later. Now, if I refer to the uh, question on the shortfall on weights and measures, uh, um, 41.1, uh, these figures are referring to up to September, but we should also recall, as I said, most of their work is at the oil terminals. And because of the effect of COVID, uh, last year they, they did not do too well at all. So it's only as businesses are picking up that they are generating these revenues. So that explains why. And then, of course, between now and December, this will improve. It may not be quite 100%, but it will definitely improve. The details of these, um, yeah, the refunds and sales of assets and rent, I think the DFA should uh, give us the details. DFA, please. Regarding the refunds, at times for whatever reason there are... During our discussion with Sugar Council, we pointed out that uh, Nigeria has some asset outside Nigeria, which is normally under the Ministry of Industries. We have a sugar factory in Swaziland. I don't know whether the Ministry is aware of this, and if it is, how do you oversee or how do you uh, account for whatever is derived as revenue from that sugar factory in Swaziland? Or is it not in your record? And if it is not, we are now formally telling you that, that it exists and you should find out what is happening to it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Please. Uh, but the details, because when we came on board, we were told of Swaziland, but we also have another factory in Bene Republic, the Save Sugar, and which we're trying to uh, resolve a lot of the administrative issues. So if the chair permits, the director IDD uh, should uh, give us information on Swaziland. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, distinguished senators. In um, Bene Republic. So Clark, please note that as well as part of the update that is required. Thank you very much. So you may proceed to your 2022 budget now. Thank you. Summary. Uh, so on uh, pages one, uh, distinguished uh, senators, from pages one to seven, we have the uh, capital budget proposal, uh, which is uh, a total of 6.5 billion, and uh, we have uh, 92 initiatives made up of 80 ongoing projects and 12 new projects. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are some projects that uh, are presidential directives, and we have uh, deadlines for meeting them. And then we have other projects that are 
high impact projects uh, and they've been going on for some time due to the amount uh, released on these subheads uh, per annum. So for example, um, the review of the industrial policy, I I'm just, uh, okay. Sorry? Uh, I, I, I was just trying to pick on some of them, but uh, so that I don't go through. Okay, for instance, uh, let me take number two, which is uh, implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Um, as you're all aware, we've joined, signed up to this AFCFTA, and everything is being done to ensure uh, that Nigeria is properly prepared, or our own exporters and um, uh, producers are properly prepared to take advantage of this market. So uh, we're continuing with the uh, sensitization and a lot of capacity building. There is actually a dedicated secretariat for the AFCFTA. Uh, item three, which is important, NADI, Implementation of Nigeria Agribusiness and Agroindustry Development Initiative. Here we've been setting up offices in each state of the Federation. And what we do in those offices is to train in partnership with the state government. We identify products in that state that require some um, value chain, value addition, and we train uh, the local personnel in that particular state. So maybe later on the director CAD will tell us how many. I think we've done uh, perhaps maybe 10, 12 of such offices, but we're uh, going around the state. Um, the export so, expansion grant, so, yes. So exactly. So, uh, Honourable Minister, if I may, if I may guide, yes. right? Can you put, I mean, just speak on the high value initiatives, right? And speak to them. I'm sure we can also follow through and pick um, questions or comments later. So, the high value initiatives that you have there, do you get what I'm saying? So, example, the export <coughs> expansion grant, speak to it. Look for, I mean, order three or four more high value. So that we can wrap up capital okay. and go to other um, um, expenditure. Exactly. Please. Yes. Okay. So um, the export expansion grant, and and I think with your kind permission, later I'll ask the director CED to explain because um, it's high value, but it's been quite controversial because uh, there are a lot of complaints and issues around uh, disbursement and then the amount released not being able to even scratch the surface. You also have uh, the Commerce 44, uh, implementation of Commerce 44 initiative, which is uh, uh, number 12. And uh, if I go down the line, we have um, um, sorry. sorry? 19. Okay, outstanding liabilities on implemented projects. Um, I, I think, Mr. Chair, um, the DFA will explain this, but my understanding is that uh, sometimes at the end of uh, at the end of the year, there are still liabilities on perhaps contracts and so on. So a provision is made to take care of those uh, contracts, but. Okay, then he will uh, talk about it. Um, rehabilitation number 30, headquarters building. Um, I think uh, Mr. Chairman might have had the chance to visit our offices. Um, yes, it's the old secretariat, uh, dignified building, but really, really run down. So sometimes when we have foreign investors coming, and they do come in, that's the ministry they come to, and that's the impact, you know, or the impression uh, that they take away with them. Um, another high impact uh, project, you have number 38. This is our National Industrial Revolution Plan. Um, by the end of next quarter, 38, by the end of next quarter, we, in, we, we must finish the review and begin the implementation of uh, some of these uh, sub-sectoral, like the auto, cotton, textile, and garment, etc. 
Uh, number 40 is high impact, but what we are getting in terms of appropriation is very low. Here, this is establishment. Actually, the main uh, project is 109 agro processing, uh, no, uh, industrial zone. I, I hope uh, there isn't a mix. Okay. The, the proposal here is to make provision for six, because last year, what we were given, um, based on an estimate of 50 million per industry, we could only accommodate six. So this year, within the same envelope, we're only uh, proposing six. Then, um, I think the other one I would want to mention um, is the trademarks registry. Um, I don't know what number it is, but the trademarks registry is one area of uh, easing the ease of doing business because a lot of uh, um, a lot of oh, trademarks. Honorable Minister, I yeah. think we have the details of your project. So let us, I mean, let's invite comments. But before we do that, are you, are you with us, please? Yes. You have given out this money in order to encourage, to boost export. What value have we gotten back is part of what you should be speaking to. So it's not enough for you to just go, give us a list of the beneficiaries. We must be sure that the, the, the objective is being achieved. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, the quick response to that is Electricity, uh, we have issues with uh, maintenance of vehicles because we have uh, outstations. Uh, we have issues with even the building itself, the various buildings we have, four or five blocks, different blocks, each one uh, with uh, separate generators and so on. So we have a lot of uh, overheads and I think any uh, increase, no matter how marginal, will support, uh, will help us to go a long way. Yes. So the personnel? Yes, I'm done. Thank right. you once again, um, Honorable Minister. So at this point, um, let me also invite comments from my colleagues, distinguished senators. Well, civil chairman and distinguished colleagues, the Honorable Minister, for me, You've made a very good presentation, ranging from your 2021 budget to date. I would have suggested that you should go, but not like you, the one you did, you took a bow because of Senator uh, uh, Patua. <laughs> but I want to ask a question. This might be outside this, this you know, your budgetary provision. This one, yesterday, I read from a paper. <coughs> Guardian, how Nigerians children in public schools and even in private schools do not have adequate learning tools such as you know, just a size books for them to write on because of the escalation cause of the size books due to the non-availability of you know, the, the new sprint and whatever they call it. And somebody made an analogy and says, we used to have a new sprint company in Yeba. We had one at the Wobin that didn't work. And we also had one in Okiboku, in Akwaibom City. That what is happening? That those ones, even though they have been sold out, but then that the government should also go into, go into overseeing whether those that, that bought the industries are performing or not performing. Because they put the cost, and it was very alarming, that the cost of importation of these papers it was worth over two billion, two billion dollars, not naira. And we are looking for money. We are borrowing money. We are going out to borrow money. And so I look at it and say, well, thank God that you have not come yet to defend your budget. Then I will bring this to your purview. What can you do? I know that, you know, because from what you have read here, you are just to mitigate, to bring out new ideas, to make sure that we align ourselves with the, uh, the African free trade zone and whatever and whatever. And of course, we talked about tomato, how we can increase in tomato production and that and that and that. And we went into to agriculture and want to also veer into you know, the, uh, 
109 in the district by just probably training people on agriculture and whatever. If we do all this training and then we don't have, you know, uh, congent you know, resources in our hand, yeah, we wouldn't work. So that's what I want you to educate because maybe so that I can also tell my constituents that this is what is happening. Then again, you talked about the ease of doing business. My constituents even came to me here and said that they applied for trademark, trademark to even establish a bakery, a confectionery. And it takes one year for your trademark division to process their paper. I had wanted to come and see the minister because I know him at the time he was a governor, I was a deputy governor. So, but then, I said, no, you should resist, you know, I should resist the attempt that, that you are doing your job. So I want, because I want to ask a question here about the velocity of, you know, the attention that you give to all this, you know, as it comes your way. So please, can you just educate us? Thank you very much. But your budget, for me, I don't think we can subtract anything. If there's any way for the chairman and the committee to add, I will employ them to add. But if there's no way, well, it will be too bad. So, so, so that we... Okay, thank you very much, distinguished senator. So let me, so that you just take all the questions one, I mean, once and for all. Um, I would like to, you want to say something? Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Honorable Minister, uh, good job. Um, your budget presentation was good, straightforward. Uh, for want of any word, better word, I, I think um, you need more money. I, I wish we have all the powers to give you more money as you've requested. Now, having said that, my interest is not about this um, yearly routine of budgeting, but uh, to discuss the importance of your industry in saving Nigeria from the economic woes, unemployment, crisis we are in. Uh, industry, this is what is going to save us. We have to manufacture what we need. Trading, we just waste our foreign reserves out there. People just bring in everything in. Now, I, I think the ministry need to do better. The ministry need to get more strategic, more forceful, especially the bureaucracy, to do what is most needed so that we can, at least the industries in this country that on the ground can take off. My interest, because I've been involved in one particular case, which is uh, the needle and syringe industry, had a motion in the floor of the house. We had a public hearing. The minister came here, and we all agreed that, look, we have industries here in this country that have capacity. There was a policy for your ministry, backward integration policy, to protect these industries, give them all the opportunity to both import and manufacture and roll back until they can meet up you know, our demand and even export. That, the ministry promised us two, three months. It will, it will get to Federal Executive Council. I think this is about the fourth month. So I want to hear the feedback because it's the best opportunity we have to interact with your budget session. And again, I read in the newspaper, very disturbing news, that the 65% levy that was placed on that same needle and syringes to discourage people importing fake needle and syringes that are being washed in China, India, I think we made the case. Some of these things are fake. They wash them and bring them back to us here. When we have companies that can produce the, the best, that can compete globally, and here are wasting. 65% levy have been passed on this guy to discourage them from bringing. Now a court has ruled a few weeks ago, maybe last week or two weeks ago, to say that levy is illegal. And we all know what happens. These businessmen, they know how to go around to achieve their goal. What is the ministry doing? Because these are the key decisions, key actions. The ministry need to take serious to make this country to survive. We have to manufacture what we need, what we can manufacture and consume what we need and what we can manufacture. And the honors is on this ministry. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, distinguished senator. Um, so let me also lend my voice to the comments um, from this side. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll also be speaking specifically to the budget that you have um, pro proposed for 2022. So if you look at that budget very quickly, and I think that you should, you should still go back and look at it. We still have a bit of time. You can, I noticed 
that in several, particularly on your capital, and I can count up to 10 different initiatives relating to automation and digitization and all of that. You understand? Now, good as that might appear, you see, if you are, I mean, um, if you are doing, you have, you have several initiatives running at the same time, and you have different people implementing, is a recipe for future challenge. I'm speaking from experience. You have, I mean, I don't want to start really now, but I'm sure you know, you have about 10 or 15 initiatives that they add up to a billion dollars in your, this is your 2022 proposal. Now, what I will expect, since you know that those needs are desirable, is best to have an enterprise platform, speak to your digital people. So you have a platform that speaks to almost all your needs. So you don't have a situation whereby, you know, the handshake becomes a problem and you pull. So it, it is part of what you need to rethink in this budget before we approve it. I don't want to go into details. I mean, I don't want to waste people's time. I think that's my first comment from what I've seen from your capital budget. Number two is that, yes, indeed, I have visited the Honorable Minister. And for a, uh, for, 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 um, um, for a ministry as critical as trade, I mean, industry, trade, and investment, in fact, from the entrance, I, I mean, my heart was almost bleeding. That, you know, given the critical role of industry in the Nigerian economy, you know, we cannot, I mean, you cannot be operating. That's where you receive investors. And you're talking about the ease of doing business. It has to be friendly. Even from the approach, honesty is not the best. I don't know all this provision for um, whatever. Honesty, you're just, what I, I'll describe it as just keeping the light on. It doesn't address the real fundamental issue in terms of friendliness of investment attraction. So you have got to find a way to deal with it. Then also, um, you also made, there is another provision for creation of Health Industries Corporation of Nigeria. I think I noticed it in your uh, capital budget. I don't know whether there is an extant law guiding that. I don't know, but you might need to avail us with that law so that we understand what exactly that is all about. Um, that would be my comment so far. I don't know, I mean, maybe you want to respond to them before we now have the closing remark. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. I will address some of these and quickly ask one or two people to uh, look at them. If I go back to the first question by the distinguished senator, yes, we're concerned about the paper industry. There's actually a committee in which uh, our ministry is represented uh, to look at the issue of uh, reviving uh, the paper industry. And um, trademarks, as you rightly said, during the, when we first came and we visited the departments, all the files in trademarks and patents, the files were on the floor, like there had been a volcano or hurricane. So the amounts that have been given so far, they've been able to uh, start off on a compactors, a new filing system, but they need support so that these uh, requests are properly digitized and they're online. And it's when they produce uh, their journals, when uh, requests are made, they produce a journal so that if anybody has any query, because you can, you may want to register a trademark or a patent, and somebody else is laying claim to that same. So you need to advertise, give time for any queries and so on before they can proceed. So right now, and with COVID, they have a huge backlog. And we're trying as much as possible to see how they can be helped through the budgetary process to move on to the full digitization. That's why I mentioned them as uh, one of our high impact uh, high impact uh, projects. The issue of um, needles and syringe industry, uh, DPR, I don't know why that, because we've since uh, moved on with that effect memo. No, we have not yet. Uh -huh. So, okay, so you, you will respond to, you will respond to that. Uh, we have discussed this issue of the, uh, what the chair, aptly described as an enterprise platform. But there is also, uh, from the head of service, uh, kind of platform 
they're supposed to integrate uh, government services within the open government uh, platform. But it is necessary uh, for the individual uh, platforms, like trademarks, they're giving a, a, what do you call it, a specialized service. So uh, in their own case, uh, we may not uh, stop, hold on to them while others are getting on board. But there are some that have similar, uh, similar cases. For example, um, we're also trying to digitize uh, the preparation of export permits. But we cannot do this as we are presently because uh, there are a lot of issues, issues with the PIA, not yeah, PIA, you know. So I think uh, the DPRS, I'll give him the floor to talk about the, I think there are two areas. The health insurance is uh, IDD, and then uh, the memo that's supposed to go to the Federal Executive Council. Yes, uh, thank you, Excellency, uh, distinguished senators. Uh, the issue on the memo to the Federal Executive Council on uh, the syringes and needles, uh, the stage we are at the moment, as the distinguished senator has rightly noted, that we had finished the stage of the stakeholder engagement at the National Assembly and that uh, the details of other stakeholders' engagement will be presented perhaps by the director chemical who is handling the project for now. But we are yet to submit the document to, 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 to the FEC because we are, we are supposed to get inputs from all the stakeholders before we harmonize so that there will be no disagreements when it goes to the FEC. So if the director can shed more lights on the stage. Yes. What you said is in your lead. Uh, we got it to a point where we bring this uh, session to a close. And um, <clears throat> my closing remark will just be to state as follows that number one, the budget as presented is noted. Um, um, I had mentioned what you need to do around your all the um, several initiatives. Maybe you perhaps we still to, you need to look at it. And I also think that part of what this session has afforded us is that there's some open items that we still need to deal with outside of the budget. An example at the earlier comments around the sugar policy. Yes, um, we on our part are written, but there are, see, uh, there are updates that must be given relating to investments in Swaziland and in the uh, Republic of Benin. There are also concerns around the um, export grant expansion. We still need to have a, we need an update on it. We'll write informally on that as well. The Nigerian, Nigerian um, Industrial Revolution, Revolution Plan, um, we will need an update as well so as to understand the, 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 the direction of the, um, of the ministry uh, further, and particularly because it's a 2014 document, we also believe that you must also bring it, bring it up in tandem with modern the realities. We're, we're li we live in the new normal. So what are the other things that we are doing in, in order to further the cause of our industrial policy? Then there is the issue, the outstanding issue around the needle production factory, equally. And um, um, you mentioned the paper and the tomato. We are equally concerned about the textile, the cotton and the textile, because these are, these, these are you know, sectors that can actually help us out with this unemployment and turn around the economy and also, you know, reduce the impact on our foreign exchange um, pressure. So, I mean, and um, Ministry of Industry, there is a main, you have a central role to play. So, but because this is a budget session, the issues have come up. We will formally write, you know, demanding for all of this. And it clearly tells us that the oversighting, I mean, is very, very critical immediately after this budget session. So on, this, on that note, I think it's an appropriate time to bring this to a close. So my colleagues, um, somebody can move forward. Just to move for a motion to... Yes, I have to move that we adjourned the session after we have discussed all that we want to discuss. Okay, I'll just... The meeting is thereby adjourned. Thank you very much.